What's up guys, it's Blaze here. Welcome back to our RPG tutorial series. In this one, we are going to work solely with the manager and truth be told, I don't think we'll be able to get through everything, but uh, let's see if we can keep this video to roughly the same time as the last one. So around 10 minutes, I want to try and get this, um, I want to get it done properly. But having said that, our implementation, I really should have said this in the video before, our implementation for our skill system is probably one of the most basic ways to implement it. There are tons of other ways that you can do it and most of them are going to be way more efficient than this one, but this is the simplest method that I was able to come up with that anyone from beginner to intermediate, I guess if you're advanced you don't really need tutorials anymore, maybe. But I guess someone that's still kind of new to programming will be able to pick up and understand. So let's get straight into this video. What we're going to do first is we are going to break our entire game and we won't be able to test out most of the functions until we get to the end of this section, right? So if you're here and you want to test out your game like between videos, <laughs> expect things to break expect things to break okay so let's uh let's power through let's get this done our first section that we're going to do is we're going to take our selected targets and we're going to turn this into a list all right so we're done here now basically what we want to do is when it comes to attacking our enemies specifically we want to be able to not just choose, but when it comes to the multi-target attack system, we need to be able to scroll through all of the enemies or all of the viable targets in our system. So that's why we need to create a list rather than having a single item. All right, so now that we've created a list, what we need to do is we need to go into, actually, you know what? Let's put in the rest. Let's finish the create event here. And what I'm going to do is I'll add in extra space and we'll add in some new functions. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've just made the text bigger so it's easier for everyone to see. Um, yeah, I should have done this earlier, but uh, hey, hindsight's 2020. Let's go through each one of these new lines together. The first one is our skills buttons. These are all of the skills that uh, will be available to us. Now, in our little demo, I'm only gonna have two. So it might not make sense to have a list of two. In fact, maybe in your implementation, it might be better to have a an array. But um, let's say, for example, there's a character that doesn't have a, let's say your character is kind of like Pokemon where they can only have four skills active or usable at any given point in time. With that, you can't, it doesn't make sense to have a list for that. It makes more sense to have, say, an array. But maybe you want some skills unlock other skills. In that case, maybe a list might be better for you. But um, play play around with this particular line, see what, see what works for you. The next one is, of course, skill targeting. Self-explanatory, it's kind of like our regular attack targeting, uh, but this one's just different in that we will use it in different ways. The next one is a new bool, which we will trigger when we receive a broadcast message. This one is called skill sent. The last, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to create an instance of C skills, which I have here highlighted we need to create a skill, a C skills object. So why don't we do that now? Let's go into our objects. We go to create and where am I? We go to object and we'll just call it C skills, All right? So now we're just gonna keep it empty. We'll stick to the manager for this video. And if time permits, uh, or if time is a bit strict, uh, we might spill over into a second one, but uh, let's keep going. The next one is the skills UI. Now this one is our skills menu, but I believe I called it something else in our, no skills UI, my bad. Should be skills UI. 
All right, so it's basically going to store our skills UI and it's going to store into this variable here, much like our, let me just close the room editor, much like our base UI and target UI are stored into variables. All right, so that's our entire create event that's done. So we created a new list for selected targets and we created a new list um, for our skills buttons, which means that in our cleanup event, we need to create two new functions to get rid of those. Okay, so as you may already know, our skills buttons will are stored in a list as well as our targets. And so if those DS lists exist, we are going to destroy them and free up memory as we need it. All right, so that's the cleanup and create event done. Let's head over to the global left release. Now this one is going to get very, very messy. All right, but keep with me and uh, let's put in a few new lines. All right, so just keep with me and let's take it one step at a time. The first thing that we need to do with this targeting section here is instead of change, instead of clearing it to none, we're going to clear the um, list itself. So let's take this and let's change the this line. All right, so that's it there. And similarly down here with global.selectedTargets equals unit, we're going to change it so that we add the unit to the list. Okay, so as we can see here with our DS list, we're going to add to our global selected targets the unit that we've selected for single target uh, attacking. We This is just for the left click. This is just for a regular attack. We still need to add a, another check that's similar to this targeting, but this time using skills. All right, so for this function, it's actually, if I zoom out a little bit, if I zoom out of the text a bit, there we go. So if we look at these two uh, different left click functions or how they act, they're kind of the same thing. The only difference between a regular attack and a skill attack is that we need to reference the actual skill be, and then we need to execute that skill um, script, right? We'll get into this much later. So don't worry if you have these warnings because we actually haven't got any of this information yet. Remember, we're sticking solely to the manager object for now. And these two lines, you don't have to worry about these for now. In fact, you don't have to write it. Uh, I just put that in there mainly because I need to remember where it is that I need to put the team checking code. So you can add this in, but we won't be getting to it uh, until much later. So that's global left released. Let's go to the next one, which is our step event. Okay, so in our step event, we're not gonna do that much. We're only going to be in two different phases. The first one is the initialize phase. And just like with the first two layers, our target UI and our base UI, we're going to add in a couple of checks for the actual skills UI. We need to turn those off and we need to deactivate the objects there as well. Okay, so here we are. We are going to set the line invisible and then we are going to deactivate the layer. Uh, I'll increase the font size again so you guys can see better. There you go. All right, so we're going to turn the layer invisible and then deactivate all of the objects on that layer. All right, so the next step is to go all the way down to the bottom, pass, check, finish, down here into end turn. And we're going to do a couple of things here as well. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to set skill targeting to false. And then we're going to take our DS list and we're going to clear our selected targets list. That's this line here. And then that's basically it for the step event. We're done with that one. All right, we don't need to go to the draw GUI. So let's skip that. Let's get into the broadcast message. And for this one, just like what we had here, we have skill sent we are going to receive that broadcast in the manager. 
Okay, so in this section, we've created a new case for skill sent. And just like with the attack, we are going to set select and finish to true. And then with skill sent, we're going to set that to false here. All right, and that basically rounds off our broadcast section. All right, so with this last bit for the manager, we're actually going to need a new event. So let's go to the manager and let's create a new user event. So we go down here to add event, other, and then user events, and I'm going to add in user event three. And here, you might have already guessed, but user event three is basically the same as user event one and two. But this time we're dealing with we're dealing with our skills UI. So we're basically going to take all of this code and rewrite it here, just keeping it relevant for the UI section. All right, so let's go through this line by line. This stuff, these first two lines should be fairly obvious to you. So if it's uh, visible, we're going to turn it invisible. But in this else statement, when it comes to turning the layer visible and reactivating all the objects, we're going to do a few extra steps. So here is the um, base layer and the target layer for reference with the else statement here. We're just going to turn it on and off, basically. Uh, turn it off. This section turns the layer off, and this section turns the layer on. For us, Right, this main, this top part here turns the layer off, but turning it on needs a few extra steps. In this, we need to go through a for loop. And the for loop is basically going to read through the list size of the skill buttons. In this case, we will have two. Um, and then for every button in that, in that list, we're going to take the label and we're going to set the learned skill to the skill name. Now, unfortunately, we have neither a, we don't have any of the learned skill um, or even skills in general implemented into the game yet. So if you get this warning, don't worry about it. We will get to that in a future video. So that just about rounds off the manager itself. Let's open up the room editor and in the skills UI, go to your skill buttons, however many buttons you have, and open it here. With this, usually we'd, we'd go here into the variables, but this time I want you guys to open up the creation code. Now, I can't quite remember the order that it goes in, but if my memory serves me right, the creation code is run after the regular create phase, right? So after the regular create event for each object, the instance creation code runs after that. So basically, let's say you have different enemies in an RPG game. There are different enemies on screen, but let's say one has max health and the other one has, you know, half health or something like that. You can override any uh, standard uh, variables and functions in the instance creation code here. So you can make unique instances per room. In this case, what we're going to do with our creation code is we're going to take each of our skill buttons and add them to our manager's skill buttons list. So let's go ahead and put just one line of code in. All right, so basically, just like I said, we're going to add this instance. This instance of the button here is going to get added to the manager's skill buttons list. Actually, it doesn't belong to the manager. It belongs to the game as a whole since it's a global variable. But uh, just keep that in mind. Now, we're going to take this, and like I said, depending on how many skill buttons you have in your game, you're going to add that to each and every single one of our skill buttons here. There you go. And it's just one line. There's nothing else to do. And that's that's basically it for this section. So what have we done? We've basically written all of the code for skills. It's ready to go. Our manager is now ready to send and receive directions when it comes to skills. In the next section, we will deal with the unit.
the actual individual unit as well as the uh, actual objects that we will spawn. Since we have new information for our for our sequence, we need to add that into our spawned objects as well. So look forward to that. Uh, yes, this this stage we won't be able to test any of our code just yet. Like I said, it will break it because there is not enough information being sent through. Uh, so if you have anything, if you're trying to test it out, just expect the game to have errors. Anyway, that's all from me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys haven't already, I hope that this video will uh, prompt you to subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you are subscribed, make sure that your notifications are turned on so that you guys know when the next video is coming. Right, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.